you can unwittingly get sucked into one of these cults, even though you don't intend to. Because generally speaking, we're not taught about how cults work in school, so we're all extremely susceptible. Even in university, they don't teach you how cults really work, unless maybe you take a very specific psychology course on that topic, which most people don't. And even then, it's not going to be very practical. It's going to be mostly theory. So we need to inoculate you against cults because these cults can destroy your life. They can suck you dry of your entire life savings and all of your possessions. They can abuse you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, even physically. They can lose you decades of your life. These are extremely dangerous and uh, toxic ideologies. And they can be very, very appealing to people who don't know any better. So that's why this topic is so important. But also it's important because someone close to you might join a cult, even if you don't. A friend or a family member. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to recognize those signs and to know what to do, to be able to give them advice, to know where to go find solutions for, for this kind of problem? Because of course, as soon as they get sucked in, they're going to try to suck you in and they're going to try to suck in more of your friends and more of your family. So it can, uh, it can really turn into a clusterfuck if you're not careful with these cults. And the last reason why it's so important to talk about this topic, besides all the epistemic uh, lessons here, is that you yourself could become a cult leader. And that is perhaps the worst case scenario. And in fact, a lot of very intelligent people fall into this trap here, is they think that them, themselves as being too intelligent and too independent minded to ever join a cult, but then they themselves go and start a cult especially if you're the type of person that resonates with my content and watches me a lot, then you're probably interested in personal development. You might be interested in, um, in teaching. You might be interested in becoming a life coach. You might even become a spiritual teacher at some point in your life. And uh, if you're not careful, you could start a cult of your own. So watch out. So let's begin at the very beginning. What is a cult? Now, this word cult is a little bit tricky because it's usually used in two different ways. There's the loose colloquial usage that we use casually throughout society where people will just call stuff a cult, even though it's not really a cult. Basically, what they mean when they say the word cult, normally speaking, is they just mean some sort of a ideological system that they don't agree with. That's, by definition to them, a cult. But that's not really what a cult is. There's a more technical definition, and that's what I want to share with you today. So what is a cult technically? It is a hierarchical organization created by a charismatic narcissistic leader, which uses mind control techniques to amass money, power, and sex. You got all that? There's a lot there that we need to unpack. So firstly, one of the most important characteristics of a cult is that it's a hierarchical structure, a pyramid scheme, quite literally, which leeches resources from the bottom of the pyramid up to the very top to the leader and to his top lieutenants, depending on the size of the cult. If it's a small cult, it's usually run by just like one leader and a few of his top lieutenants. So it's this kind of structure. And the entire structure is designed to serve the narcissistic leader at the very top. It's an authoritarian power structure, sort of like a little tyranny or a little despotism or little monarchy that the leader builds for himself. And he's doing it for rather very shallow reasons, very materialistic reasons. Because he's got an ego and he wants to feed all of his lower base needs. The needs for security, survival, attention, approval, love, power over other people, and of course, sexual gratification, good food, luxury, all this kind of otherwise very low consciousness stuff. Now, these cults are often started by Zen devils. And if you don't know what a Zen devil is, go check out my episode, Becoming a Zen Devil. It's a pretty important one. So basically, a Zen devil is someone who has had some mystical insight, maybe has had an enlightenment experience or two, but he's still immature and his enlightenment is half-baked. And so whatever mystical states he's attained, he hasn't fully embodied them and he still has an ego remaining and still has a shadow remaining. And overall, his level of development on the spiral, spiral dynamics wise, is quite low. 
Oftentimes it's stage red or stage orange. So it's sort of like a half-assed version of spirituality. Somebody goes and, and does some spiritual practice, then they think that they've understood the whole world. They think they know more than they actually do. They misinterpret many of these mystical insights. Maybe they have a vision or two. Maybe they have an enlightenment experience or two. Then their ego seizes on that and says, aha, look, I am God. I know everything, this kind of uh, idea. They're still very immature as a teacher and as a leader. They have many aspects of themselves they still need to develop and work on, but because they have this silly idea that, oh, well, if I just had this one enlightenment experience, that's it. That must mean that I'm now <laughs> incapable of error and incapable of misleading people and my, in incapable of deluding myself. Um, they, they get sucked into that and then they create this sort of authoritarian pyramid scheme in order to serve all of their shadow egoic needs. And really, if you want to think about essentially what function does, does a cult serve, really what it is is an egoic distraction created by the leader's ego in order to not fulfill his full spiritual journey. See, it's very sneaky. It's very sneaky how the devil works. As I've talked about before in my episode, what is the devil? That's also a very important one. Go check that one out. Uh... See, the devil loves to co-opt legitimate spiritual insights, teachings, and techniques and to use those towards his own devilish purposes. And what I mean by the word devil is not some uh, demonization of somebody. Really, I'm using the word metaphorically. And really, when I say the word devil, what I really mean is ego or selfishness. That's what I mean. I don't mean a creature with horns and a pitchfork. So you see, as you're going on this spiritual journey and you're having insights and experiences and you're developing yourself, all of this is good, but it can always turn pathological. There can always be a point where your ego, even though it's seen something big with some enlightenment experience, then it tricks itself because the mind is so self-deceptive. See my mini series on self-deception. Uh, the mind is so self-deceptive that it tricks itself into thinking that it's already arrived when in fact it hasn't. And that's really just a distraction from continuing the journey, you see? So the ego creates this cult, and now it's so busy externalizing its actions rather than turning inwards and self-reflecting and developing itself further and having more enlightenments and realizing still how much more growth it has to do, the ego thinks it's done, and now it thinks that, oh, it needs to go out there and spread the gospel, proselytize people, convert others, and transform the world, awaken the whole world. See, and really what that is, is just a self-deception mechanism. And you need to be wise enough to be able to see through that. Otherwise, you will start one of these cults if you're doing this work. So what's tricky about cults is that cults are not all bad. It's not all delusion. It's not all self-deception, the way that most people think. Most people in mainstream society, they think like, oh, a cult is just some crazy fringe phenomena that I would never get involved with. Because, you know, I don't believe such, such crazy things. But what you're underestimating is that nobody joins a cult under those reasons. The cult always lures you in with genuine spiritual insight and self-improvement techniques, which are valid. But what it does is it twists them around. And so it's a, it's a mixture. A cult is a mixture of genuine spiritual teachings and insights and self-improvement techniques with toxic narcissism egotism, hierarchy, this authoritarian pyramid structure, the leader's shadow, and then heaps of ideology. And this just creates this very toxic brew, which can lead down a very dangerous road if you're not careful. So the thing you have to really understand about cults is that on the surface, they will seem very appealing. You're not even going to know that you're joining a cult when you join a cult. There's not going to be like a big sign on the front of the building saying, come join our cult. It's not going to be like that. You're always going to feel like you're joining some legitimate organization which genuinely wants to awaken the world or to help you or to help others. The way that a cult really works is that it tries to create a reality distortion bubble, a collective fantasy. So together, a group of people come together and they create an ideology. 
such that they don't have to actually do spiritual work, but they can just coexist in this bubble of self-deception. And each one of the people in the group reinforces the self-deceptions of all the other people. And so it feels to them as though they have awakened. But really, they haven't. And they actually become very blind, very unaware to all of the egoic self-deceptions that are running within this collective fantasy. And they're always constantly having to fight the external world to maintain their fantasy because it's a fantasy, because it's false. And so falsehood always has to struggle against the truth because in the end, the truth always wins out.